All right, welcome back to the Wireshark Masterclass. This time we're on lesson six. So I'm sure you've had to look at a Wireshark packet capture and then you're looking through packet after packet and all you see are all these numbers. You see a bunch of IP addresses or TCP port values, but wouldn't it be nice to be able to name those something that makes sense? Well, stick around because that is exactly what we're gonna learn how to do. Well, my name's Chris, if we haven't met before, and on this channel, I like to talk about how to learn Wireshark and get more out of our packet captures. So in this lesson, again, we're gonna talk about naming resolution, how that works with Wireshark and how we can get the most out of it. So I have a trace file for you in the description down below. You can go ahead and click on that link. It'll take you out to CloudShark. From CloudShark, you can go ahead and download that trace file and follow right along with me. Now naming with Wireshark can get a little complex. So we're gonna start simple and we're gonna go into how it actually works and how we can configure it in our own system. So let's go ahead and take a look at this packet capture and see how it works. So here I have my Wireshark Masterclass profile. If you've been following along with this series, you've already learned how to set that up. And this time what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off by going up to Wireshark preferences. Now, remember that if you're in a Windows system, you can find preferences under the edit menu down there at the bottom. Okay, but on a Mac system, you're gonna go to Wireshark preferences. Here under preferences, you can find name resolution and name resolution. Under here, we can see that we resolve Mac addresses. So we can have a layer two Mac address resolution. That'll give us that organizationally unique identifier, a name of something rather than just the hexadecimal Mac address. So if I uncheck this, that means that I'll only see the Mac addresses. So let me go ahead and uncheck that just to show you real quick, kind of say okay. And here, if you notice, now I only have the actual hexadecimal values for the MAC address. Now for me, those things are pretty helpful to have, so I actually prefer to have those. So I'm just gonna go back to Wireshark Preferences, gonna come back into Name Resolution. Let's go ahead and click that box. Now here I have resolved transport names unchecked. So what that means is if I take a look at my trace file over here, you notice how in my trace, you just see the TCP port numbers. So 443, uh, you see the client side ephemeral large number. But if I say resolve transport names, what's gonna happen is Wireshark's going to compare the, the port values that it sees in the trace file against a list of well-known port numbers. So let's go ahead and see what that does. Let's say okay. And if you notice here, I've got HTTPS 443. So common port values will have that associated name next to them instead of just the number. So that might be a preference that you wanna set up in this profile. But now let's actually talk about the one that most people use for name resolution. And that is, so instead of having IP addresses or IPv6 addresses, we actually want a name here. So let's see how that works. I'm gonna go back to preferences, gonna come to name resolution. And this is where by default Wireshark actually has this unchecked. You can see resolve network or IP addresses. Now, if I hover over that, this is where Wireshark actually gives me the method that it uses to resolve these names. And we can just read that together. It says resolve IPv4, V6, IPX, and the host names. The next set of checkboxes determines how name resolution should be performed. If no other options are checked, name resolution is made from Wireshark's host file and capture file name resolution blocks. All right, so once I click this, now the following checkboxes really begin to matter. So for example, the first one, use captured DNS packet data for address resolution. See, there's basically two ways that Wireshark can name. It either finds the names from within the trace file, so naming systems like DNS. So for example, here I can see in the background, I do a request for google.com and I see a response come back. So now Wireshark from within this packet capture has the ability to say, okay, this IP address over here, I'm just gonna name that google.com. And that was from right in the trace file. Wireshark doesn't have to do anything extra to do that. So where possible, that's what Wireshark wants to do instead of generating a bunch of extra traffic to resolve names. But if an IP address does not have a name that Wireshark can resolve from within itself, well, then we can have it go and use an external network name resolver. And by default, what Wireshark will do is it will use the system, the actual system that it's installed on, use that DNS information and go and actually generate DNS queries 
and wait for those responses to be able to do some naming. Now, alternatively, we can come in here and we can give it a custom list of DNS servers. So if there's a specific DNS server that you want Wireshark to use and not the one that the system has, that's where you can come into DNS servers and say edit, and you can actually configure that DNS server. So at a high level, that's basically what happens with naming. But I'd like to show you a few other tricks that you can use while you're doing your analysis. So for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and check this, gonna say okay, and I come back to my trace file. So again, here, google.com, this IP address had an associated DNS query just before it. So we can clearly see where this one comes from. Also safebrowsing.google, here we can see that DNS query that happened just before. But to take a closer look at the, the hosts that are actually resolved in this trace, I'm gonna come up here to statistics, gonna come down here to resolved addresses. All right, now this brings up the resolved addresses window and I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna say instead of all entries, I just wanna say hosts. So now I have a list of addresses and names that Wireshark will use within this trace file. And as we can see that this one would be specific to this trace file. If I loaded a different trace file, I would have a different list of hosts depending on my configuration or depending on what hosts are actually in that other trace file. Now, in many cases though, here I have some private address space. You can see a lot of my uh, IPs aren't resolved yet, especially the ones that are in that private address space. So to give those names, it's pretty simple. All I gotta do is just hover over one of them and I can right click and I can come down to edit resolve name. Now from here, what I can do, I can just say uh, client, for example, if I'm analyzing a specific client machine and it has that address, I can say, okay. And let's just say, for example, that this is my gateway 10.1. Okay, I'm going to right click that and I'm going to say edit resolve name. I'm just going to call that gateway. All right. So now I have client and gateway. So I can quickly on the fly do some manual naming here. And if I go back to my resolve names, this is where I can come in and I can take a look at the hosts and I can see client and gateway were both added here. Now this is also information that can be appended to the trace file. So what that means that if I'm using the PCAP NG file format for this packet capture and I sent that to you and you opened it up locally and you went ahead and resolved IP addresses, you too would be able to see client and gateway. Let me show you how that works. I'm gonna say close. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to view and let's go down here. This is a very rarely used part of Wireshark. So you're not gonna be here too often, but I just wanna show you how this facet of the system works. If we come down to reload as file format capture and what you're gonna see here, I'm just gonna go ahead and say save. Really I only have one entry up here, but really the this is basically the header information within the file, within the PCAP NG file. And if I come here and I expand this, what I wanna do is basically I have information about each packet within the trace. I wanna come all the way down to the bottom to this list. And I'm gonna see at the very end that I have this name resolution block here. And check this out. If I expand this out and if I go block data, records, now I have gateway, client, okay? So here's the names that I just configured. Here's the IP addresses that I found from within this trace file and their associated DNS names. So now I can actually save this as a part of the trace file as long as it's PCAP NG. And if I send it to anybody else, Wireshark can actually use that name resolution block to do some of this naming. So it doesn't have to generate extra DNS queries. So there we go. That's how we can do name resolution within Wireshark. And these are some nice features to remember when we're working through our trace file. Now, just a quick note as well before we wrap this part of the class. Uh, what happens if we want to remove some of these custom uh, names that we've created? Well, very simply, we can just go into client, for example, I can say edit resolve name, I can just come in, remove that name, say okay, and I can have my IP address back. So at a high level, that's how name resolution within Wireshark works. There's a lot going on under the hood here, but very simply, just remember that if possible, Wireshark will use the trace file data itself to do the naming, or alternatively, it will actually generate DNS requests and try to do some of this resolution on its own. Well, thanks for stopping by the channel and I'll see you on another lesson in the Wireshark Masterclass.